Well, hi again. Welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to show you a product that I just purchased. It is a 3D printer. Yes, I'm moving into that realm. And I've been thinking about it for quite a while because I could use things that are hard to buy. And if you do buy them, they're very expensive. But there are 3D print capability that can provide those things for me for my computer bills, for my studio, for my photography, on and on. I want to be able to be, make my own things when I need it. And it's going to take me a while. It's going to be a be a big learning curve here, I know that, but that's okay. I'm up for the challenge. So what I have here is the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. It can support a wide range of different types of filaments, all different colors, of course, but including things like carbon fiber. So sounds like it's gonna be a winner for me. I've already taken it out of the larger crate so I can get it up here in the desk without it going all the way up. It came with a lot of packing, literally, um, at least another foot, higher than this and at least another eight inches on wide on each side and the back and front a very large box well padded i can't complain about that but i wanted to take it out get it up here so i can show it to you and i'm going to follow the actual startup procedure on it it's already assembled but it comes with a lot of packing stuff still inside and things that you have to remove in order to get it to run and then of course i'll show you how to install the app and the online application that you have that comes with this that is their version of a slicer program it's a slicer and several other things combined in one it's made by bamboo labs so we'll go ahead and take a look at that let's get started okay okay here's a top view of it and as you can see it has a getting started quick start manual tape right to the top here so i'm going to be going through this and using this along the way here as i open this up Looks like they describe all of the different components. And over here they talk about, uh, you know, taking it apart. So we have to open up this top, so I'll have to remove a lot of this top uh, plastic and such. And then uh, the, the AMS unit has stuck in here somewhere. So I have to go in there and get it. So let me do that first and uh, we'll take it from there. Well, before I start with that, they gave, they gave us three sample rolls. This one here says PLA, support for PLA. And it looks like it's a white one, according to this. It says white over here. There definitely is some something in there, so take a look. Got a green, a green one, it looks like. PLA Basic. And it looks like we have one that's here saying PLA CF, and that looks like it's in black. Okay, so those are the starts to it. Oh, in addition to that, they gave us this little, I guess a model. Is it a sample that they printed on it? I'm not sure. But it's that uh, thing, I think they called it a Banshee, right? Let me open it up and see what we got in here. It has a little model in here. Plastic bag, let's open it up. Oh, it's a little black ship model. I'm not sure exactly what that is, unless that's a tool and I don't realize it. I'll figure it out in a few minutes. It looks like a, a motorboat. The actual engine from a motorboat. I didn't see that listed in the included parts, but maybe I missed it. So let me put that away. Okay, I gotta remove this tape here on the side. Let me get this off. Take out the top plastic. The whole thing opens up. <laughs> Let me see the other side have that too. Yeah, let me take it off the other side here. And then the whole thing comes out. Looks like it's a piece of glass covered in plastic. So I'll just set that on the side for now and we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. Got plenty of packing material in here. Let's get some of this stuff out without damaging anything. I'm trying to be careful with that. There we go. I got to tip it a little bit. There we go. Whoops, that fell in there. See what about this one here? Let me take this out first. This is the accessory box. Check this out. Oh, a nice little cardboard holder for it. And we have 
looks like the front panel display here and a bunch of other stuff that's listed cables I'll set that aside for now okay looks like I have to take out some screws that are inside of here before I can proceed so I got to take off this front one as well to get inside there they give me some allen wrenches for that purpose here put those down oh and the whole thing opens up okay so what we have here it looks like some screws over here they have these little red labels on them oh and there's the piece I dropped in there before and I've got to remove these screws before I could take out the AMS unit that's sitting right in here right now this is the bottom of it so let me see let's take this screw out here there we go now let's see does this unit come out now oh it's been loosened up okay so I should be able to get this out now let me bring it up there's some packing material over here let's see I gotta get that out first it's up here in the top this piece of packing material is in the way to get that out of there and then here's the AMS unit okay so I'll close this up again for now I'll take off the rest of this I think that's good for getting the insides out let me move on to the next step okay it says there's four more screws inside of here that we got to take out that are also marked with red after we get the AMS out so I've got to remove those I had this uh, dry packet stick along the side here I pulled that out I'll save it though it seems like a pretty good one looks like it could be recharged so I'll save that anyway this thing that was holding down the AMS now should come out okay the four screws are still in there that's okay I can dump these out here right that's a total of six screws now removed I don't know I guess I'll just keep this in case I ever have to ship it back but it doesn't look like it's gonna be in there okay so now I'm back at the top here they want me to remove some more stuff from this part looks like we have to take off this cover from here and this sponge from here okay okay I've turned it around and here at the top I put the AMS I took off all of the plastic wrapping from it so that we could see it easily enough and uh, I need to hook up a tube here this tube here looks like it has to be connected up to this little unit here on the other side now so this has to go into this little hole here at the top until it locks in place like that then there are these two cables one is a four pin and one is a six it looks like the six pin goes here on one side let me see do the sides matter I don't think so. they look exactly the same so let me put a six pin in here All right and the other end of this goes up to this thing it says it doesn't matter which hole it is so I'll put it over here on one of these they latch into place and then the four pin one looks like it goes in on the bottom here are they the same on both sides too no it looks a little bit differently which side do I need on that do I need the l-shaped side or the, well, it looks like they're showing neither so it's got to connect up over to the connector over here yeah so what I'll do is I'll put the straight one over here let's see does the uh, angled one go here better it's a four pin no it actually goes the other way better so let me do this one put the straight one in here that's the four pin it locked in place and then over here it needs a six pin and there's the angle going down so I'll put it in this way like that until it locks in place oops popped right out again there we go okay 
that seems to look like the picture. So we got the two cables. I'll use some cable ties on this later. Okay, I think that takes care of the back for now. Now it shows that there's a spool holder that can connect up over here. But since I have the AMS, I don't think I need that. So I'm going to leave that off for now. And we'll see how it goes. Because I don't think we need that right now. And why have something else shutting out the back that I don't have to? Well, I'll find out. I may change my mind on that later, but that's the way I see it right now. Oh, it looks like they also gave us a bunch of extra little nylon tubes here. I guess as replacements for these if something goes wrong, huh? There's several in here. Looks like there's two different sizes, so it's probably to cover both of these. Okay? So I'll save that. Okay, we're back in the front again. There's a couple more things I gotta do here. Open this up. I still have the plastic covering the glass for now. We have to take out a couple more of these screws that are securing the plate the plate that goes up and down. So I've got to remove those screws next. Let's see, it looks like there's one on each side over here. Yeah, one there and one here. So I gotta take those out. Get that Allen's wrench again. Okay, there's another cushion underneath this plate, but we don't take that off until after it's done its preliminary calibration, which is the first step that we do after we power it on in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead now and uh, close this up and do the final step. The final step is over here. There's a little ribbon cable with a connector at the end. Got to be very careful with this. You can easily pull that connector off if you're not careful. There we go. And we've got the LCD panel that has to go on there. Okay. So let's go ahead and get that installed. Okay, got the LCD screen here. Let me get this cable connected. I understand this can be a little bit touchy. So I'll be very careful with it to make sure I get it in there. Okay, you gotta move this up a little bit, I think. So you can access the cable connector a lot easier. So slip that in there. See what we get. I think I got it. Let me push it in. Yep, looks like it's in. Okay, now we get push this part in here like this. Get it into the little notches. Oh, let me go the other way again with this. There's little tabs here that have to go in to the top. Push that in, and then it says push to the left. So snap it in place. And there we go. A little bit tricky, so be careful with that cable. It could easily break, in my opinion. Okay, the next step will be to actually move this guy over to its final place. So we'll go ahead and do that next, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's turn it on and see what happens here. Oop, came up into the screen. Let me go ahead and do a tear on this. going through the menu. Okay, let me click on these choices. English, of course. North American. Okay, I joined my network and now it has this QR code standing up here. So let's uh, get my application from my phone out and connect up to it. Go into devices, bind to a printer. Okay. And it sees uh, my user, confirm and bind. And it looks like it's connected now. And it's logged into my, uh, I have to agree to terms. I have to join. I'm gonna skip that for now. It's saying the printer needs to calibrate. Please ensure that the heat bed is unlocked before starting the calibration. I believe I got all those screws out. And let's say next, calibrate. And there it goes. They're not kidding when they say it's noisy. Doing all sorts of stuff in there now.
Do you see the padding on the bottom there? It says not to remove that until after the calibration is done. So I'll leave that on there for now. Well, it looks like it's done, huh? Okay, let me uh, move on to the next menu choice here. Next. Looks like I can start printing if I wanted to at this point. Click start printing. And there it is waiting for the print command. So let me let it rest a little bit and then we'll come back and do a sample print.